Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes, this time in X-Plane 11. For this slide I'm flying the Colimata Concorde from Recife in Brazil to DIAP in the Ivory Coast. Uh, I don't know exactly which city that is, but uh, it is a flight of 2,042 nautical miles and across the Atlantic Ocean. It has been a while since I have flown in this series, and that is frankly because the series was of a relatively low priority, but I'll try to pick it up again. We are continuing to listen to the Apollo 14 audio with the silences and static removed, so not in real time. And one reason that I decided to pick up the series again, especially for this flight, is because there is going to be a Concorde released for flights in 2020, and I am encouraging myself not to get it. The Colimata Concorde is a very nice Concorde. It's full featured and everything. You can do the full startup. And I really should save the money for other things. <laughs> so, uh, yep, I'm going to convince myself that this is a fine Concorde. And after all, uh, the main selling point for flights in 2020, the wonderful scenery, has no bearing on the flights that the Concorde normally does. For instance, like this one across the Atlantic, where it's just water. So, yeah. If there's one plane I don't have to get for flights in 2020, it's this one. So let me just enjoy it here, uh, where the scenery doesn't matter. Not that the scenery is horrible, mind you. I mean, we've got some stuff there. But all right, so I'm going to start out the audio, and we'll hope I do not hurt myself flying this plane. Roger out. Okay, and so... And you heard Stu Russo report a mighty good burn. Uh, no yeah. All right. To I think we're good to go. Residuals with the RCS. And our guidance and control officer reports that the burn duration was an even 10 seconds, uh, which is almost precisely as planned. 100 knots. Power set. Okay. Sort of feels tilted, but uh, rotating. Information we showed the actual burn and we're a little bit underfueled because the flight is not the maximum range of the Concorde or anything. I guess we'll leave the afterburner on for now. Gear coming up. Gear coming down. No, no, not down, not down, up, Our up. <laughs> Please. Our I better check outside. Data. Okay, it's up. Let me get the nose up. Right. I should have had a key for that. It is a little bit frustrating cooking this thing. Okay. All right, we're all set. Okay, understand. Uh, I don't know why he just kind of down, but okay. I think that's a noise and reduction, maybe? VC, I don't know. Uh, minus 4 .1. We're keeping the afterburner on for now. Okay, Delta VC, minus 4.1. Fuel. Let me get the autopilot uh, ready. 0, 0. 0.2. Oxidizer 98.9. And unbalance is 300 decrease. Is that correct? That's affirmative. And if you didn't get the residual, there are plus 0.2, minus 0, and minus oh, 0. Oh, we got clouds here. What? What? What just happened? Oh. Jeez. Okay. Uh, the speed was going quite well. Our telemetry data showed that uh, the onboard clock. <laughs> I mean, I thought, well, as long as the speed's okay. But, all right, maybe because of the uh, which is intakes. Extremely close to what we showed on the ground. Uh, our reading. I've come out of afterburner too because. Uh, you heard that was Stu too Rusa shocking. Comment that the simulator was never like this. A reference to the fact that the, the trim. Let's see. Uh, trim for flight. Precisely uh, as planned. The flight dynamics officer. Uh, That's what I get for being busy with the autopilot. Should have just done that right from the start. Data on the trajectory to compute a trajectory arc okay. and determine what effect the uh, maneuver had on the trajectory. Uh, this is a process uh, that normally requires uh, uh, several hours before the uh, data becomes refined and the flight dynamics officer has uh, uh, a good stable uh, 
prediction on the effect of the maneuver. He'll have a preliminary uh, report uh, uh, somewhat before that, okay. uh, usually in a matter of 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, 14, this is Houston. We've reviewed the chamber pressure and the SPS engine operation from this last mid-course on the strip charts, and it looks real fine. Uh, we'll have some more words for you, for, for you later on the reconciliation of the burn times in uh, tens of seconds. Uh, we're curious as to what okay. value you got with I'm your stopwatch. I'm just uh, making sure that I know how to get to go up to hopefully... That's right. Uh, all right. Looks good. 10.2 over. All right. Uh -huh. Looks like we're all set here. Hey, Bruce, where are the strip charts show with PC, uh, two banks? Okay, outside view. Uh, we're going to have to convert from uh, percentage of thrust. Lots of frame rates now. Right at you. Oh, no sweat. Uh, don't cause you any trouble. I was just curious. Oh, no, they're doing it anyway. It's just so we hadn't gotten it accomplished with this burn yet. Okay. Might want to Just check. Uh, probably right. I've got some plugins that need serious updating and aren't working right, right now, especially as far as the visuals and the clouds and all. Uh, Roger, we, uh, we're eyeballing it. Fourteen, this is Houston, uh, for your information. When starting the PTC spin-up, uh, we we'll use quads Alpha and Delta over. Okay, we'll use Alpha and Delta for the spin-up. Oh, 14, this is Houston. Uh, your oh, average uh, chamber pressure... For the chrono the is showing that I'm using PSI afterburner, even, even though I, the afterburner lights haven't lit. Okay, okay, uh, the well then we'll decrease our uh, climb rate. Right around. Houston, uh, 14. Go ahead, 14. Okay, Bruce. Okay, uh, now it's stopped. I'm sure not seeing what I expected to on this, uh, dark side of the earth through the, uh, sextant here. The, uh, the angles that uh, that you gave me lined up the uh, the optics uh, pretty much over on the uh, so ridiculously the smooth side, now. Right? But through the uh, through the sections, there's still a lot of light coming in, and uh, I uh, that high speed black and white. I I don't see why we're not going to wipe it out. I uh, I guess I really expected to see pretty much. Uh, darkness uh, through the sextant here. Okay, stand by. So, okay. apparently he's doing uh, strange, uh, star sighting uh, for navigation on this, uh, sighting, Bruce. Yeah, we got stand a, by. in the audio. Got okay. I think that's Stuart Russo, the command module Houston. pilot. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Well, Roger, we've been advised that there was some illuminated area of the Earth expected to pump up to be the volume in the field of view for this uh, dim light photography. Uh, what we'd like you to do is to go ahead using the nominal angles. Uh, take your three exposures. We are frankly not in the then, most exciting uh, part of the Apollo 14 audio, mind you. We'll have a new set of shaft and trunnion angles for you, and you could squeeze off three more. Over. Okay, no sweat. I'll press ahead and. Uh, well, we take are the here. Roger, press on. Uh, 14 Houston, uh, in your original transmission, did you say that you could see any of the illuminated portion of the Earth through the section eyepiece, or just that you had some scattered light coming in? Over. Uh, I've got quite a bit of scattered light. It's negative on seeing any of the uh, 
of the lid portion uh, I manually, you know, I've driven it over to the Terminator and then... Uh, okay, yes, 20,000 feet. Oh, let's turn on the, the afterburner again. We're Shoot. on the dark side, but uh, there sure is a lot of light. Uh, let's gain showing. more speed without the Okay, we copy. Uh, 14 Houston, have you already mounted the camera on the sextant adapter? Or to the sextant? That's firmly, Bruce. I'm in the middle of the first uh, frame right now, but it's no sweat to change. Uh, I can do anything you want. No, no, don't do that because uh, we'd have to squeeze off uh, more film at uh, 24 frames per second prior to dismounting it. Okay. I should just manually speed up letting it use the afterburner like this. This is Apollo Control at 31 hours, 26 minutes. As you heard, uh, Stu Russo is preparing to uh, use the Maurer sequence camera, 16 millimeter data acquisition camera aboard the spacecraft for the dim light photography scheduled, scheduled in the flight plan at this time. Uh, Russo will uh, have the camera mounted, or actually has the camera mounted at this time to the sextant of the spacecraft, uh, uses the spacecraft computer to point the optics in the proper direction, which in this case is uh, at the Earth dark side, and he will take three frames, uh, one... I finished the, uh, the one minute, the 20 second, five second exposures, and uh, I'll just hold here until you give me uh, some more angles, if that's uh, what you want. Okay, Stu, uh, what we'd like you to do is in uh, your longitude over two for P-22, just uh, put in minus 42.5, which was the uh, the value that was originally in the flight plan before we updated you, and uh, run three more exposures, and that'll wind it up. Okay, we'll enter uh, flat and long over two like it was originally uh, in the flight plan, and, and repeat. Roger up. That last comment came from uh, Apollo 14 Commander Al Shepard. Uh, Rusa took the first two frames, first three frames, uh, one exposure at 60 seconds, one at 20 seconds, and one at five seconds. Uh, these pictures taken with very high speed black and white film uh, are hoped to show some of the phenomena on Earth that are visible only in very dim light, such as lightning. And as you heard, Rusa will uh, now re repoint the optics and take three more uh, frames of the same phenomena at a slightly different pointing angle. Uh, hopefully one of the two uh, angles will give a minimum of uh, reflected light into the optics. The reflected light, of course, uh, tends to wash out the amount of detail that's visible. I was trying to find a good external map. I don't have an external map app for okay, XP11 on this computer the, uh, anymore I put the back because on I changed and, uh, computers. Our second one and uh, it's, it's going to be just about the same. All right, you're still, uh, I think that wraps up the requirements for the uh, dim light photography. Right. And uh, just to clear up the uh, situation that uh, I created on giving you a quad alpha delta, uh, we are recommending Alpha and Charlie for the PTC spin-up, and uh, your option on the quads is to use for uh, rate damping. Okay, we figured that's what you meant. Just in case it's not clear, they're still on their way to the moon. At 31 hours, 42 minutes. In Apollo, Apollo 14. Uh, Apollo 14 crew has completed the. Uh, dim light photography scheduled in the flight plan. Uh, the next event will be to stabilize the spacecraft and then spin it up at the uh, relatively slow rotational rate of three revolutions per hour. Uh, this is the passive thermal control mode used to maintain the proper uh, thermal stability, the proper temperatures of the uh, uh, spacecraft, exposing uh, all sides of the spacecraft equally really to the uh, accelerate that much, uh, radiation but... from the sun. At the present time, we show Apollo 14, 121,264 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 4,200.
271 feet per second. The preliminary data from that mid-course correction maneuver performed at uh, 30 hours, 36 minutes, 7 seconds, as called for in the flight plan, is that the uh, delta V gained the velocity uh, resulting from the maneuver was 71.4 feet per second. 30,000 feet. And the preliminary tracking data shows that the maneuver had the effect of lowering the point of closest approach to the moon from 2,104 nautical miles to 67.05. Uh, the maneuver was targeted to lower the point of closest approach to about 60 nautical miles. And the flight dynamics officer reports that uh, with additional tracking, oh, we have the, expect the this uh, data to show that we came Here's very the close map to on that. This thing. The burn was almost precisely normal uh, as planned. Uh, the burn duration had been targeted for about 10.3 seconds, and on the ground we measured the burn time at uh, oh, 10 seconds. I guess seconds. that's not too bad. Of course, the uh, guidance bad, system on the spacecraft is else, uh, designed though. to shut down uh, the engine based okay. on the amount of velocity gained rather than the uh, time of the maneuver, rather than the time of burn, uh, so that it's perfectly consistent for the guidance system to shut down uh, uh, within a fraction of a second or a second of the pre-computed time based on the uh, amount of energy that is uh, gotten from the engine in any particular maneuver. Uh, during the uh, burn and for about uh, one hour before, uh, Louise Mitchell, wife of Lunar Module Pilot Edgar Mitchell, was in the control center uh, viewing the uh, procedures. Now, we don't have a great deal of activity scheduled on the flight plan now. Uh, the astronauts are scheduled to begin another sleep period at 41 hours or uh, about uh, 9 hours 15 minutes from now. Uh, during that, uh, during the interim period of time, uh, primary activities uh, will be uh, systems monitoring and uh, such things as charging batteries, uh, venting the uh, batteries. And of course, setting up the passive thermal control mode, which uh, uh, will be that was uh, beginning the soon. external map asking for permission. Earlier this evening, uh, we again talked with the crew about the condition and the events preceding and leading up to the docking operation and the condition of the probe assembly uh, following. Uh, crews answering some additional questions uh, about the probe assembly. They were advised that uh, the probe appears to be normal and that we will continue with the normal flight plan leading up to a landing on the moon uh, as things stand right now. The Saturn third stage, the S-4B, uh, based on our last uh, computations, will impact the moon at 82 hours, 38 minutes, and 3 seconds at a latitude of 9 degrees, 32 minutes south, longitude 26 degrees, 20 minutes west. And as we continue to gather more tracking data, uh, these numbers have been changing, and we expect that uh, they will continue to change uh, somewhat. At 31 minutes, 47 seconds, this is Rather, rather 31 hours, 47 minutes. This is Apollo Control, Houston, standing by. Apollo 14, this is Houston, over. Right. 14, Houston, you can secure the high gain antenna at this time. We recommend a pitch of minus Go five. Ahead, Bruce. We recommend a pitch of minus five two degrees, yaw of two seven zero for securing the high gain antenna. Request Omni Bravo for PTC over. Well, we should be able to Paul fourteen this is Houston. Pass the speed of sound. You now. may secure the high gain antenna now. Pitch minus five two. Yaw 270, request Omni Bravo for PTC, over. Houston 
Okay, we are past Mach 1. And we just had a whole lot of drag hit us. Apollo 14, this is Houston. Stand by for an important announcement. All right, uh, All right you're, you're go for PTC spin up now. That's the passive thermal control. They just roll so that the sun isn't on the same side the whole time. Uh, it's about 20 minutes per roll. Hey Bruce, how come we haven't heard any news like uh, who won at Daytona and uh, things like that? Well, we tried for one news summary, and most of the news came out to be on the subject of Apollo 14. But we figured you guys were probably the ones that had the inside scoop on that, so we'll give a stab at another one. Yeah, tell us what's going on at the, uh, the races at Daytona. Okay, uh, give us a couple minutes, and we'll have some word for you. Okay, uh, I think oh, no we should ascend faster. Apollo 14, this is Houston. Go ahead, Houston. If uh, the workload isn't too heavy up there for you, we've got another set of noun 88 values for uh, sighting on the S4B, if you're interested. Okay, and welcome Okay, you can go ahead. Uh, Roger, 14. Noun 88, minus 3429er3, minus 859001, minus 38013. Over. Okay, Bruce, you back with it? Yeah, I'm still with you. 60 ton Mach 1.3. Ramps moving confirmed. Fuels 40,000 feet. All these announcements. <laughs> 40,000 feet, Mach 1.3. Hello, Houston, and now you 14. Everything is good. Uh, 14, we're approaching an antenna switchover period here. Uh, let me give you a call again in a minute. I feel like is underselling how far along we are. Let's see. Okay, that's better. Hello, Houston, how do you read 14? 14, Houston, loud and clear, how me, over. Uh, we're back with you. Uh, how about giving me uh, R3 again, please? Okay, R3 is minus 38013. Read back, over. Okay, reading you back from now 88. Minus three four two nine or three minus eight five nine or zero one minus three eight zero one three. Roger, read back correct. Uh, these are calculated for a GET of thirty two hours and forty five minutes, but should be valid from uh, the present up through about thirty three forty five. You will be able to see the S four B when your spacecraft roll angle is between eighty five degrees. That's zero eight five degrees and 020 degrees. If you do see it through the sextant, uh, we'd like you to try to take some pictures using the same uh, techniques as on the dim light uh, photography for camera advance, same film magazine, same exposure times, uh, if you concur, over. Okay, sounds great. I uh, understand this is uh, set up for a time of 32 plus 45, uh, zero, zero. however, it ought to be good now, and we ought to be able to hack it when our roll is between 085 to 020. Zero zero. And if we uh, lamp the big moose, we'll uh, take some pictures of it using the uh, same magazine and the uh, same procedures as the uh, Earth uh, dim light that we just finished. Roger, roger. 
Huh. Uh, didn't acquire the altitude, but that's okay. We are going to go with this anyway. Uh, 14, this is Houston. Uh, we advise that the S4B is tumbling uh, at a rate of one tumble, that is one uh, 360 degree tumble, about every four and a half minutes, so that uh, the intensity of the the object may vary. You see it out there, and even if you don't, S four B is the spent stage that pushed them to the moon. The film, They're just uh, like take some observing it. Perhaps it would show up on the photography if you can't see it with the naked eye. And as a, another item, your uh, phase plane plot for PTC looks like you've established a, a very good PTC here. It's curving back around toward the center. We think it's uh, going to hold for quite some time. And we'd like to get battery alpha on charge at your convenience, over. Okay, uh, Bruce, uh, copy that. We get around to the right roll angle. We'll uh, give a go on the S4B. Copy about the PTC, and we'll start a charge. Roger. Do you see anything out there, Stu? Well, we're just now coming out from uh, behind the limb. Uh, looks like I've got something here in the, uh, in the section. Let me pull her in the center and see what it looks like. 50,000 feet. Okay. Do well, want to make two sure. In the, uh, in the sex, then, well, we heat uh, is definitely off. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you know, we can acquire uh, 55,000 nice and smoothly. Thanks, uh, I, I don't see any, uh, any tumbling uh, on a view of the aircraft. Uh, Houston, uh, four and a half minutes in that phase. I actually either. prefer a lower frame rate. It's too darn smooth. Roger, we copy. There's this move, it just means that you don't have enough scenery. Let's face it. Okay, Shadows could do some improving, not the, the plane's uh, fault. And I'm about to lose the other object, whatever it was. Yeah, I'm 14 Houston. Uh, we got a little sports news for you. Okay, go ahead. Oh. You're just in time for dinner. Would you rather I croon something soothing to you, like background music or Ravel's Bolero or something? Uh, negative on the music. We got all <laughs> that uh, we need here. Uh, you can uh, just croon. They carried good, custom uh, tapes. Why don't you hold on a bit? My dad can get his headset on. <laughs> it's not that detailed. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if it was really all that earth shaking. Uh, I've got the results of the Daytona races. It was uh, won by Pedro Rodriguez from Mexico uh, with his partner Jackie Oliver in a Porsche. And uh, they completed 688 laps of the 3.81 mile course there at Daytona in 24 hours. Uh, Ronnie Bucknam and Tony Adamowicz were second in a Ferrari, and the Mark Donahue, David Hobbs team was third. In winning the event, Rodriguez and Oliver averaged okay. over 109 I miles think per it's hour gonna for a 24-hour period. Get us to 55,000. In Sunday's Andy Williams San Diego Open Golf Tournament, Californian George Archer took the honors with a 700 par score against his closest competitors. Dave Eichelberger and Jack Nichols. Archer ended up with a 65 and $30,000 in prize money. Over. Okay, very good. Thank you. And we are on altitude hold. Roger, you can tell I had to take his headset back off now.
This is Apollo Control at 33 hours, 10 minutes. For some reason, it isn't We're going up to 450, so I'm going to overshoot yeah, the crew is my estimate here. The rest period at about 41 hours ground elapsed time. At the present time, we show Apollo 14, 124,800 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 4,149 feet per second. I haven't a updated it since the last time I flew it, though. Uh, to the flight director a short while there ago. might be that, something. Uh, uh, tracking seems to be confirming that the uh, mid-course correction maneuver uh, is bringing the spacecraft in a little bit higher uh, above the moon than uh, had been planned. This would indicate a slight underburn. Uh, the uh, predicted point of closest approach at this time is uh, still holding quite close to 37, or rather 67, uh, nautical miles. The burn had been targeted to bring the spacecraft to within 60 nautical miles at its closest approach. Uh, this particular burn seems to be uh, seemed to have been quite sensitive to uh, very small uh, velocity errors uh, on the order of about two tenths of a foot per second. Uh, would uh, the FIDO says account uh, for the difference in the planned uh, altitude and the actual at uh, seven nautical miles. Uh, additional tracking, of course, uh, will probably show some change in that number, but it seems to be holding in uh, quite steadily at uh, about 67 nautical miles. The uh, people in the spacecraft engineering support room uh, report that uh, all systems appear to be functioning well at this time aboard the spacecraft. Uh, virtually no problems of any significance. Passing and as we mentioned earlier, all right. uh, the Mark crew was two. advised this evening that uh, come on. Come on. with the probe at uh, with what we know about the probe at this time, it appears that uh, the mission will be uh, go for okay, lunar Mach landing. Okay, Mach 2. 1,163 knots ground speed. At 33 hours, 12 minutes, this is Apollo Control standing by. And we appear to be on track. So as Liberia was another option as far as where we could land, this is Apollo but Control at there was a nice big airport on, in the Ivory Coast. Uh, we've had no the IAP seemed to be a nice big uh, one, with so the crew since our that's where we're going. Report about 30 minutes ago. At the present time, Apollo 14 is 125,649 nautical miles from Earth, and the spacecraft velocity is 4,121 feet per second. We're preparing for a, a shift handover in mission control at the present time. We can only wonder what and that higher streak is. Uh, having a change of ship. Maybe like an SR-71 or something. MSC News Center. Uh, it's actually a little dot that seems to be moving really, really hour. fast over there. Hmm. Flight Director Jerry Griffin is coming on to relieve Flight Director Milton Wendler. And the capsule communicator on the upcoming ship will be astronaut Fred Hayes. At 33 hours, 32 minutes to do Apollo Control Houston. Oh, 14 Houston. All right, we took up a collection here in the control room and bought a newspaper and got a couple more items. Great. Right, Houston, pick up another collection. You might buy two. Oh, we'll buy you a morning paper too, a little later. Uh, on the Daytona race, a few more details. Uh, reading into the, the article, Rodriguez and Oliver divided the driving chores up uh, about equally. Oh, this is good.
Okay, stand by. Now we do have to make sure that we're down to below the max landing weight by the time we get there. That's one reason uh, I underfueled it. I think we're okay. Go ahead. Got a long way to go yet. All right, you're back in the Daytona. Does it uh, Rodriguez and Oliver divided? Go. Oh. There is a whole Concord section here, huh? Different views, UI. It's got a map. Oh, well, that's just the regular map. Now. And I was advertising that. Okay, the engineer things. Okay. Apollo 14, Houston, how do you read now? Not clear, Bruce, go ahead. Okay, let me try it once more with bigger. <clears throat> Back in uh, the Daytona race. <laughs> it's all about the Daytona race. Divided Jeez. up the driving chores about equally and had built up a lead of 213 miles at one point in the race. But trouble struck with about three hours left when the car's transmission failed as Oliver was motoring around with not a care in the world. Transmission failed. Two Ferraris, <clears throat> the one driven alternately by Bucknam and Tony, Ad Tony Adamowicz of Wilton, Connecticut, and another under command of two-time U.S. road racing champion Mark Donahue and David Gobbs of England, had survived the long night but we're out of it as long as the four held together. Oliver brought the powder blue car into the pit, and he and Rodriguez spent an agonizing 93 minutes watching their lead wiped out as crewmen feverishly made repairs. <clears throat> Bucknam gained the lead 70 minutes from the end, and Donahue pulled in the striking distance before crew chief John Wire could get the Porsche rolling again. Rodriguez bolted back to the course a half mile behind Bucknam, Ferrari was spitting fire and having trouble getting through the turns. The Mexican hotshot needed less than two laps around the 3.81 mile layout to catch Bucknam and was never in serious trouble again. Well, there you have it. Damn, that's a, that's a good summary, bro. It was. <laughs> yeah, I ought to be a sports writer. <laughs> I think this must be Bruce McCandless. Yeah, that was very interesting, uh, Bruce. And uh, the next item here uh, is a headline that says uh, Apollo number 4,900 to orbit the Earth. <laughs> the Aerospace uh, Defense Command has entered Apollo 14 as number 4,900 in its records of Earth orbiting satellites. The ADC uh, housed inside Cheyenne Mountain is providing NASA with information on satellites passing near Apollo 14 during its uh, journey to the moon. Just thought you might be interested in that. Well, they say always better late than breathe. It's friendly. It's better to be number 4,900 than not to be at all. And meanwhile, <laughs> today at New York, doors of baseball's Hall of Fame swung open for seven old-timers elected a by a veterans committee as far as after the regular ballot of the Baseball Writers Association of America had failed to name any moderns to the shrine. Legendary pitcher Rube Marquardt, who shares the record of 19 consecutive victories in a single season, and George M. Weiss, the executive genius who built the New York Yankees into an awesome powerhouse from the late 1940s, led the advance of the old-timers. Also named were outfielders Harry Hooper, Joe Kelly, and Chuck Heffy, first baseman Jake Beckley, and shortstop Dave Bancroft. Mark Ward, who won 201 games pitching mostly for the New York Giants and Brooklyn Dodgers from 1908 to 1925. Hooper, who hit 281 in 16 American League seasons, and Kelly and Beckley, both pre-1900 stars, were named as real old-timers careers ended by 1925. And uh, here's another uh, startling bit of news from uh, London. The headline says, subway riders arrive, can't get out of station. More than a dozen passengers were trapped in a London subway station for more than an hour early today when the staff locked up and went home. That sound familiar? 
Does it sound familiar? Is this something that happens frequently? When the passenger frequently? got off the last train on the Bakerloo line at the Mida Vail Station in Paddington, they found exit blocked by steel shutters and the station deserted. Police were called and they in turn contacted London subway officials. A spokesman for the London Transport said it would investigate the incident. London subway service shuts down from about midnight to 5 a.m. Uh, why, why do I get the feeling that the person who answered there has accidentally shut something down early? You're referring here to the day when England changes to decimalized currency. The government agency coordinating the switch says Finally, is going decimalized to currency. Our latest survey has shown that since November, there has been an incredible improvement in the extent to which people are familiar with decimal equivalents. A decimal currency board spokesman said Sunday. On February 15, no more tuppence worth two dollars and forty cents officially will become worth one hundred new pence. And uh, next on the agenda here, vehicles are called the top noisemaker. Dateline is from Paris. Motor vehicles are the chief source of city noise, and only governments can do anything about it. This opinion is the result of a two-year study by the Consultative Group on Transportation Research of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. That's an awful. This problem is worldwide. Lorenzo Marquet, Mozambique. This item, fresh floodwaters have poured into Portuguese East Africa's cyclone-stricken lowlands today, hampering rescue efforts for thousands of flood victims already marooned four days. The central government said 135,000 persons lived in the worst affected area around Kelemani, administrative capital of the central Zambezia province. Only 24,000 people have been rescued, but Zambezia Governor Lieutenant, Gen Lieutenant Colonel David Ferreira declined to estimate the death toll. Good night, Fred. Very good. Good night, Bruce. Tremendous. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. We had to censor the best parts. <laughs> that good? We had to censor the best parts. That's too bad. It'll be a daily show, I assume. Oh, we'll see what we can do. Houston 14. Go ahead, 14. Hey, Bruce, uh, going to take some pictures of this uh, S4B area this time around. Uh, do you want me to have the uh, two uh, strips at 24 frames per second for two seconds and everything, just like on the uh, other sequence? That's affirmative, Stu. Okay. All right, 14 Houston, uh, if you feel like doing a little paperwork here, I've got an update to the in-flight erasable load procedure. Uh, as a result of the new PIPA bias and gyro compensation is uplinked to you just prior to mid-course two. Okay, stand by one, Bruce. Okay, Bruce, go ahead. Let me just take a look at everything Houston, here. Page 9-4 in the GNC checklist. Uh, load I think that was for loading for fuel Albuquerque. Under Past that. Identification number 03. 
The old value is no. 77143. No, nope, that's still the regular New value, 76674. OID okay. 05, old, 0, 0, Just one, wondering one, if there was zero, anything I needed to pay attention to. New, 00, 320. OID 07, old value, 76745. New value, 77417. OID 11. Old value zero zero four seven seven. New value zero zero six. Make that zero 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 six three. Read back over. Okay, uh, under column A zero three seven six six seven four. Zero five zero zero three two zero zero seven 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 four one seven and uh, eleven zero 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 six three. Roger, read back correct. For cryogenic hydrogen management, we'd like to turn the heater in hydrogen tank number two off. Is the and, hydrogen uh, for the fuel cell? calculations so. show that your paracynthian altitude is currently 67 miles. As the uh, period of our tracking improves, we expect this to work down towards about 60 nautical miles. And uh, we have a question for you. Have you noticed any cosmic ray flashes uh, during your last sleep period or at other times when the uh, command module was darkened over? Please say no. <laughs> Hydrogen 2, uh, heater off, over. Roger, H2 tank number 2, heater off. We'll call you when we want it back to auto or on. Okay, it's off now. And Jay Vera released off a few flashes. I'm not quite sure what they were ascribed to, but uh, nevertheless, we saw flashes uh, during sleep pretty last night. Okay, was this... Unfortunately, uh, we're a little bit... Uh, we're a little bit too tired to conduct any sort of measured experiment or data with them. But no, I guess it was a science day. opportunity, but most of those kinds of things uh, can Roger, be one question. Would you say radiation that you were sources. Dark adapted when you saw these, or did you see them uh, before you were well dark adapted? I always speak for myself. I didn't uh, start signal until after I woke up uh, three or four hours after going to sleep. Hey, Bruce, I had a comment I noticed on that last night. Uh, I'd wake up uh, several times and I'd turn on the light to uh, take a look around. Uh, yeah, I guess I can bump up the speed a little it. bit here. And uh, then I'd... Uh, Close my eyes again, and uh, I'd, I'd see some flashes uh, real soon after I had been uh, looking at these lights. Now they were rather subdued lights, but uh, you know, it, it, I certainly wasn't totally dark adept. Okay, uh, what sort of lights were you using? The floodlights or the integrals? Uh, using the integrals, uh, mostly uh, several occasions. Uh, I, uh, I did have the floods uh, up uh, to check, and uh, then I turned them back off again, and uh, didn't seem to matter much. Okay, thank you, 14. Houston, uh, for your information, the program alarm was a 404, turning angle greater than 90 degrees. Hey. This is Apollo Control at 34 hours, 23 minutes ground elapsed time. Goal Team Flight Director Jerry Griffin is uh, being briefed by each of the console positions here. Each man uh, runs down the items that he has upcoming for the shift. The 
outgoing uh, flight director Milton Wendler, accompanied by his flight dynamics officer Bill Boone, are en route to the Houston News Center, where they will have a change of shift briefing for newsmen in the small auditorium. Apollo 14, uh, with very little conversation from the crew in the last several hours, uh, is now showing a distance from Earth of 127,737 nautical miles, velocity 4,051 feet per second. At 34 hours, 24 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Houston. Go ahead, Fred. Uh, I want to pick and verify for us that you have H2 tank number one to auto and H2 tank two to off. That's verify. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 34 hours, 36 minutes ground elapsed time. We're anticipating no uh, immediate conversation with the other quiet crew of Apollo 14 during the period that the change of ship press conference is underway at the news center in Houston. The uh, conversations, if any, will be recorded on tape for a subsequent playback at 34 hours, 36 minutes, on elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control at 35 hours, 5 minutes, ground elapsed time. During the uh, change of shift press conference, some three and a half minutes of air-to-ground conversation was recorded on tape or playback at this time. Uh, presently, Apollo 14 is 129,338 nautical miles out from Earth, traveling in a velocity of just about an even 4,000 feet per second. Some of the uh, major milestones are, at least from a statistician's point of view, a uh, halfway point in time between liftoff and lunar orbit insertion will come at 40 hours, 56 minutes, at which time the uh, spacecraft will be 142,119 miles from Earth and 81,723 miles from the moon. The anticipated time for crossing the so-called equal gravisphere between uh, Earth and moon will be 66 hours and 3 minutes and 7 seconds. I believe that tape may be ready now for playback, so let's uh, roll that 3.5 minutes and resume uh, live monitoring of air ground. Oh, okay, Fred, whoa, that is uh, not what just, I wanted to do. Uh, went Stop through that. the Hikon and uh, everything uh, checked out real fine, and uh, we ended up with magazine W on it. Sorry, accidentally expanded the window okay, a little bit more than I wanted. And you ended up with magazine W. Right, that's, that's per the plan. <laughs> Fredo, do they want the time and days uh, at this point? Uh, that's the problem, Ed. Uh, I guess they like the times and they like how many frames they uh, used off the uh, other mag that was on there. Okay. Uh, mag B is in Victor. We started with frame zero. 
and into the frame nine before resetting the counter. The LTC clock is on day 764 at 0730 corresponds to the GET of 342642. GET is ground elapsed okay. time. Okay, copy. So that's how they calculate time for everything. They used to make them play a lot of tic tac toe on the next two or three pages of the flight plan. <laughs> They're still on their way. It's got to take a while to get to the moon. There's not a lot to do in the flight plan. I have had lunch a few minutes ago. It's afternoon. Okay. I have seen the flight plan. It is, in fact, rather empty at this port part. Yeah, I have to agree with you about the next few pages. They do look pretty slim. They are available if you actually want to see the flight plan for... I, I don't remember which Apollo missions the well, flight plan is available for. It might be all of them, but... Go ahead. I definitely have seen a few of them. Uh, the photo people would like to... Yeah, the photo people would like to know if uh, y'all got the uh, S4B uh, pictures uh, using the dim light uh, Earthside uh, settings there and uh, about when you did that. And uh, we took some pictures. Whether we got them or not, it needs to be seen. Is that a pun? All right. <laughs> Say again. Uh, well, pictures were completed at 340325. And uh, they were on magazine J for Juliet. Okay, you shot him at 34, 0325 on uh, Mag Juliet. Uh, 14 Houston. Apollo 14 Houston. This is Apollo Control. That completes playback of the accumulated tape. We're now live with Apollo 14, continuing oh, to monitor the aircraft loop. Oh, those were recorded bits while they were during their change of shift. Apollo 14, Houston. Going to Okay, I have uh, an LOI minus five hour uh, flyby maneuver pad for you that uh, we owe you about this time. Uh, you got the good book out, ready to copy? The good book. There are slots in the flight plan to jot all this stuff down. Okay, SPS slash GNN. Six three five two six. These are emergency maneuvers zero, that zero. they're getting all the information Minus for ahead of time just zero, in case three, they lose three. communications. Zero seven six five. This nine, is three, prior one, to lunar five, orbit four. insertion. Plus zero three eight two three. Minus zero one zero four three. Minus zero 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 eight four. Two four six two zero eight zero six two. In slash A plus zero zero two one two zero three nine or six four zero five six zero three nine or one two 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 one one seven. Tape squeal. 
Uh, okay. Uh, start back with uh, Delta BT, please. Okay, Delta BT, zero three nine six four. And zero five six. Zero three nine one two. Two two. Two one one seven. Zero eight seven. The next three lines are in slash A. Then down eighty one down sixty ones are minus two seven eight six minus one six eight zero two one one four nanner eight three six one five nanner and the last item, GET 05G at 1651225. Under comments, GDC align uh, set star, Sirius, and Rigel. R align 230. P align 170. Yaw line zero zero two. No knowledge. And the burn is SPS docked based on the PTC restment. Okay, I think I've been two hundred foot off. Okay, uh, the now 44 at uh, Apogee was in slash A, Perigee plus 00212. Roger, now 47. Okay, uh, wait, uh, 63526. Halfway there. I just want to see if y'all are still around there. Um, 
Remember, there's uh, big gaps between some of these segments of the audio because I cut out the silences. Elapsed time, one hour, five minutes, it says. Well, I was asking you uh, if you had seen anything from that uh, vantage point. Pretty dark down here where I am right now. It's been an hour so Fred, since I took a look at either uh, back in your direction or at the moon. And if you back to see where you are now. I guess the mission on the uh, Terminator ought to be somewhere around uh, India, Pakistan, somewhere in that, along that line. Okay. Uh, Houston 14, we are blowing out the hatch window right now, Fredo. Okay. I gotta do something about the shadows, though. That's just unacceptable yeah, I guess over there. Wait about another 20 minutes or so for it to come up in the hedge. Right. I expect also it's down just a little bit too far for us to see. Cloud edge. How big a moon are you seeing there? Is it about uh, uh, ocean edge? Some edge going on there. Uh, uh, right, short uh, of a half, and size uh, uh, appears uh, about like an orange hill that's uh, just short of arm length. Probably some tens about a degree and a half an hour to the left. Yeah, the board here is at about uh, 135,000 uh, out now. Okay, that's making it uh, slightly over a degree in Africa. But you already know, Fred, the bomb starts to take on a little bit of and then there's the whole thing where the oceans have a grin on them. I don't know, maybe, maybe Flight Sim 2020 has a few points. <laughs> Gotta say. But some of this might be mods messing around because I haven't updated them in a while. Yeah. Because I definitely had visual mods. And I haven't touched him in a while. And Fred, uh, I have a binocular on the spot now out to up to five. And uh just starting to look very interesting from this point of view. The home planet. <laughs> oh, a guesstimation was uh, somewhere uh, between the Sudan and India. Roger. And uh, looking at your position uh, overhead here, uh, you ought to have uh, Philippines, uh, mainland. Uh, the Far East uh, in sight. As a matter of fact, I do have read there's quite a bit of cloud cover and I'm having a little difficulty identifying land masses. Uh, I'll be able to pick it up for the next time. 
around there. Okay. And uh, 14 Houston. Yeah, I was trying to give you a sunrise terminator there, and I guess from your, uh, I got some pictures here that tells me uh, that what you're probably looking at is a sunset terminator. And that's running uh, right through Australia and uh, right across the uh, coast of China. Okay, uh, that makes a lot more sense for it. I'm uh, pretty sure I had the Aust Australian continent uh, down the bottom of my life area and looking up across uh, the Philippines. And there's a great deal of cloud cover in that area, but there are a few islands standing out, I believe, and I can see the southern tip of India standing out without too much cloud on it. Raj, uh, India should be uh, right about at the, uh, the edge. Right. Uh, Houston, 14. Uh, go ahead, 14. Is there still a fairly sizable tropical storm uh, off the east coast of Australia? Hey, I'll uh, ask somebody about that one then. I guess he spotted this storm. Part of it seems to be in darkness right now, but I seem to be seeing about half of a very large uh, uh, circulating air mass. Uh, Roger it. Okay, uh, I think we're maybe back on the good on me now, Ed. Go ahead. Say that last again, Ed. I say I don't have very much viewing time of either the mud or the earth as it swings past the window. It's very low, and I, uh, we only have just a few minutes on each window. But it's the most inviting and magnificent view. I'm very glad we have uh, Earth as a home planet. I hope we can keep it so it's inviting. Roger, Ed. Uh yeah, lo again, looking up at the big board, I can uh, need to get about another uh, 40,000 miles or so, then you'll be more directly in the uh, Earth-Moon uh, plane, and uh, you ought to have them pretty much centered in the window about then. Oh, okay, no, thank you. Everything remains nominal. Ah, the scenery is cleared up. Oh, not the ocean in particular, but at least the edges out on close to the horizon.
Hey, I heard uh, a little bit of your onset there, Ed, before uh, Omni B got us again uh, with the bad comp there. And uh, I guess uh, Lem 8 got built just like uh, Lem 7, because uh, I noted that same sort of thing there. Yeah, I guess that's what it's all about. Good thermal protection and uh, expand for the heat and track when this is sure to get the heat cycle. Uh, with respect to your uh, weather uh, question a while ago, Ed, uh, they uh, say they do have a, a weak uh, cyclonic uh, storm to the west of Australia, but they're not showing anything uh, to the east, and I, maybe I misunderstood, but I thought you said you saw it over uh, by the sunset terminator to the east. numbers 930 nautical miles velocity well G whiz 3851 feet per second at 37 hours seven minutes round elapsed time continuing to monitor air ground as long as the crew is awake this is Apollo control Location was They're on here. Uh, you can see this refresh. Your, uh, it's Abidjan Abobo. It's at Port Boe. That's from, where uh, DIAP is. Pressure. But the uh, total delta of time is very close. Uh, on that burn, uh, you would have clocked uh, 10.15 versus 10.2 via PC. Uh, okay. You say 
Had we measured PC, we would have parked 10.15. Is that firm? No, you'd have, from 90% PC down to 10%, uh, you'd have got 10.2 seconds. And if you'd have started your watch with uh, bank A full open to uh, the bank A needle showing full closed, you'd have measured 10.15. Except uh, you'd have. In the time, absolute time scale, uh, tons, and you would so how much left do we need to burn uh, before we can to the right. actually land? Uh, about 15 tons more, and we're safe for landing. Because there is a lag in the, what I'm telling you is okay. there's a lag in those needles moving by about a, a quarter of a second from what the actual chamber pressure is. Okay, I understand. I know uh, you'll be happy to hear that uh, we won't have a need to do the uh, uplink uh, here at uh, 3940. The uh, state vector looks in uh, great shape as uh, is. Very good. Glad to hear that. You're right. We won't have to work that in this uh, busy schedule here. Okay, we'll proceed to the next item. This is Apollo Control, 39 hours, 59 minutes, ground elapsed time. Flight surgeon just uh, reported a few moments ago that uh, apparently uh, lunar module pilot Ed Mitchell had unplugged his biomed harness and uh, apparently was uh, preparing to go to sleep. They're somewhat ahead of schedule on uh, this particular item in that uh, the rest period is not scheduled to begin until 41 hours ground elapsed time, which is uh, almost two hours from now. One hour from now, I beg your pardon. I don't see how it could be much quieter whether they were asleep or awake, <laughs> judging from the past several hours. Ouch. Come on, guys, be more excited. Sparse conversation. Your boring mission control. <laughs> Apollo 14, now 140,000. 147 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity 3,657 feet per second. An update uh, for S4B impact, uh, which was uh, run at 37 hours approximately ground elapsed time, shows the impact point at. Uh, Eight minutes, 52, or, um, as you were, eight degrees, 52 minutes south, 25 minutes, 25 degrees, 51 minutes west, at a ground elapsed time of 82 hours, 37 minutes, 33 seconds. At 40 hours, one minute, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. We see you're now 93s. Houston. Go ahead, Houston. 
Okay, the uh, PTC is... <laughs> that grid's gotten enough. worse. Uh, I don't know what sure does next, that. Uh, upcoming sleep period, so we'd like you to stop at about uh, okay. zero roll. And, it can't uh, be like that in the so, uh, regular sim. It must be some sort of mod. Interim, you can do uh, any venting or dumping you might have to do and right. crank it up again. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that DC Designs Concord. <laughs> this is a nice one though. Okay. Interior especially. Okay. And, uh, I guess I should just never go outside. Okay. It's all nice in here. Okay. And 14 uh, Houston, who's the duty cook tonight? Go. I don't think they answered that actually. Who did duty cook or be? 14 Houston? Uh, we okay, we'd like H2, H2 tank number two to auto. Okay, H2 number two, I'm going to auto now. Okay, that's a heater switch, Al. Control at uh, 41 hours 25 minutes ground elapsed time. According to flight surgeon Willard Hawkins, and here in Mission Control, the uh, only one still apparently awake is Commander Shepard aboard Apollo 14, and he uh, apparently is settling down into the easy rhythmic breathing of one going to sleep. But uh, Rusa and Mitchell apparently have been asleep for some time. Apollo 13, uh, Apollo 14, now 143,114 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 3,568 feet per second. At this time, we will take down the air to ground circuit, and uh, should the crew wake up and make a call back to the control center. We will tape this for delayed playback. 41 hours, 26 minutes, ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. And we are at 1 hour and 28 minutes elapsed time. That's the elapse there. And we have been on afterburner for 11 Apollo minutes and 14 control seconds, what it says. 33 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apparently not everyone is asleep up there. <laughs> had a call just a moment ago uh, offering uh, the crew status and onboard readouts so we'll play catch up with tape and go live uh, as quickly as we get uh, through uh, the brief burst of tape let's go Houston 14 we're ready with our crew status report and with a verb 74 not a whole lot of communications during this day it is day two of the trip to the moon for Apollo 14 now stand by one before you start that uh, report the new Capcom referred to uh, is uh, Gordon Fullerton, who is uh, replacing Fred Hayes at the Capcom's console. Some handover going on here in the room. Pete Frank being briefed by the outgoing flight director, Jerry Griffin, who uh, will be coming to the news center as soon as the handover is complete for uh, briefing on Gunnell and knows what. But uh, at any rate, he'll be coming over that way. We're standing by live on air ground at uh, 4135. Uh, Houston, 14. 
14 Houston, go ahead. Okay, Gordon, uh, Fred made his comment before you left. I guess you uh, wanted us to reestablish PTC before we sack out. Is that affirm? Affirmative. Okay. Apollo 14, Houston. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Roger, uh, we're waiting for a good OVNI to come up before starting that e-memory dump. Uh, one reminder is to complete all dumping before you uh, try to start the PTC again. And uh, a question. With respect to the yeah, the uh, O2 dumps low high, uh, can sort of throw it off there, uh, somewhat propulsive potentially. So since we're wondering they, if you're uh, doing anything uh, different than normal procedures as far as the uh, waste management overboard drain or any other uh, outside drains to control uh, O2 flow high problem. Over. Oh, I guess there's a little problem. Uh, that's a negative on the. Uh, procedures were uh, we're not doing anything uh, unusual there, and uh, we haven't had any problems today. Uh, the O2 flow you saw a minute ago as we were pumping up the cabin to five seven, and uh, as far as the ones that uh, we had yesterday, uh, really don't have that psyched out. Uh, Roger, still. Uh, 14 Houston, we're ready for the EMI dump. Okay, uh, Garden, Verb 74, and coming at you. Roger. Mm -hmm. 14 Houston, we're ready to copy uh, your crew status report and onboard readouts. Okay. Again. 37.0. Roger. We copy all those. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 41 hours uh, 53 minutes, uh, now to the flight of Apollo 14. Our displays uh, show Apollo 14 uh, presently uh, 144,049 nautical miles away from the Earth and uh, traveling at a velocity of uh, 3,540 feet per second. The uh, change of shift uh, has been affected in uh, the Mission Control Center. The uh, orange team of flight controllers uh, replacing uh, the uh, gold team. Uh, there will be a change of shift to briefing in the uh, small auditorium yep. of uh, building Not a whole lot of point popping out uh, here. Minutes. This would be a change we'll of shift here. briefing uh, with uh, flight director uh, Jerry Griffin. The uh, modular space station uh, news conference uh, has been moved uh, from the uh, 9.30 time uh, to uh, 1.30 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, I repeat, the uh, modular space station uh, news briefing has been uh, moved back to uh, 1.30 p.m. Uh, this afternoon. At uh, 41 hours uh, 54 minutes into the flight of Apollo 14, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo 14, Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, we're within uh, 
rate limits and looks like a good place to start the roll rate for the TC. Okay, uh, we're going to hang loose here for a few minutes before we uh, spin it up. All right, just down. Oh, 14 Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Stu, when you do get ready to spin up, uh, let us know before you do, and we'll uh, catch it at a good point to start it and give you a go. Over. Okay, uh, that, that sounds like a good plan. Uh, Again, we want to make sure that. Uh, starting got the PTC, all that the down thermal down control. We, uh, spin up. In which case, they will be spinning. But they wanted to do that after any sort of waste water dump or something. Just in case that would cause a wobble. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 42 hours, uh, 5 minutes uh, now to the flight of Apollo 14. Our displays now show uh, Apollo 14 at a distance of 144,443 nautical miles away from Earth. Velocity now reading uh, 3528.5 uh, uh, feet per second. At uh, this time, uh, we will take the uh, line down and uh, switch to the change of shift news conference. At uh, 42 hours and uh, 5 minutes, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control uh, Houston at uh, 42 hours, uh, 32 minutes into the flight of Apollo 14. Apollo 14 now at a distance of uh, 145,367.8 nautical miles and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 3,501 feet per second. Uh, since our last report, uh, Capcom uh, Gordon Fullerton has had uh, only a brief contact uh, with 14 uh, with command module pilot uh, Stu Rusa. We'll play that for you now. Houston 14. Apollo 14, Houston, go ahead. Okay, Gordon, I think we're through with our uh, all our venting uh, for the present time. Uh, anytime you say we'll uh, spin up. Okay, stand by. I guess I want to wait here a little bit. Okay. It's Apollo Control Houston. Uh, surgeon data indicates that uh, Spacecraft Commander Al Shepard, uh, Stu Rusa, and Ed Mitchell are uh, still awake, uh, but apparently uh, getting ready to start their rest period. We're at uh, 42 hours, uh, 34 minutes into the flight, and uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 14, Houston, looks uh, good now. We're starting to spin up. Okay, Gordon, we'll give it a go. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 42 hours, uh, 43 minutes into the flight, uh, that brief exchange uh, of conversation between uh, Capcom uh, Gordon Fullerton uh, here in Mission Control and uh, Stu Russo, the uh, command module pilot. We now show Apollo 14 at a distance of 145,757 nautical miles, uh, traveling at uh, an ever-decreasing speed or velocity uh, now reading uh, 3,489 uh, feet per second. We'll stand by and continue to monitor uh, here in Mission Control, and uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 14, Houston. Go ahead. Roger, I'm sorry to have uh, woken you up if you dozed off. We'd uh, like you to check the S-band normal mode voice switch off prior to going to sleep there. Okay, 
Well, we're under 500 miles from our destination now. Apollo Control Houston, Regular for miles, not hours, not uh, miles. 57 minutes. Uh, that was Al Shepard uh, responding judging to from uh, Capcom there. Gordon Fullerton's call. 14 now, uh, 146,192 nautical miles away uh, from Earth. Present speed uh, reading uh, 3,476 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 43 hours, uh, 32 minutes. Uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. Uh, we show the spacecraft uh, presently 147,372 nautical miles uh, out into space and traveling at a speed of uh, 3,442 uh, feet per second. Uh, we've had uh, no contact uh, with the crew of Apollo 14 since our last report. Uh, Commander, uh, Spacecraft Commander Al Shepard, uh, Stu Rusa and Ed Mitchell uh, now into their rest period. Our uh, flight surgeon is presently monitoring, monitoring data on uh, Spacecraft Commander Al Shepard. Uh, his data indicates that uh, Shepard uh, is relaxing, but probably not yet asleep. At uh, this time, we will uh, take our live air ground line down and uh, bring it back up uh, should we have contact with Apollo 14. We're at uh, 43 hours, uh, 33 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, let's do a double check of the situation. Uh, only about nine tons over the landing weight. So definitely going to This is Apollo Control Houston enough. at uh, 44 hours, 32 minutes, uh, now into the flight. Apollo 14 is presently uh, 149,338 nautical miles uh, out from Earth. Its velocity uh, now reading uh, 3,384.9 feet per second. Uh, we've had uh, no communication uh, with the crew since our last report. Uh, the crew of Apollo 14 uh, now well into their rest period. Uh, our clock and mission control shows uh, six hours and 27 minutes uh, remaining until uh, time of wake up. Meanwhile, the uh, surgeon is uh, following data on uh, spacecraft commander Al Shepard. Uh, he reports that uh, Shepard uh, entered into a sound sleep at uh, 43 hours, uh, 43 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. We're at uh, 44 hours, uh, 33 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 45 hours, 32 minutes. Now into the mission. Apollo 14 is uh, now at a distance of uh, 151,272 nautical miles away from the Earth. It's uh, now traveling at a speed of uh, 3,329 feet per second. We've had uh, no communications uh, with the crew uh, since our last report. Uh, the crew now well into its uh, rest period, to their rest period. Our, uh, one of our countdown clocks in the, the control center shows a wake-up time uh, of five hours and uh, 27 minutes from this time. So at uh, 45 hours, 33 minutes, continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, scenery outside doesn't this see... This is Apollo Control, Houston, ah, at uh, 46 hours, it's gone 22 worse. minutes into the mission. We uh, now show Apollo 14 at uh, 152,854 nautical miles uh, away from Earth. And at well, at velocity, the risk of descending too soon, I'm going to start descending anyway. Our uh, clock and mission control uh, shows uh, four hours, uh, 37 minutes uh, remaining on the uh, rest period of the Apollo 14 crew. 
We would also like to repeat at this time an earlier announcement, the uh, modular space station news briefing. Modular space station news briefing. In about five minutes at uh, 1.30 Well, that's not going to happen in a hurry, is it? That's uh, five minutes at uh, 1.30 p.m. in the uh, news center briefing room. At 46 hours, 23 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. All right, I need to add buffer. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 47 hours, 32 right minutes now into the flight of Apollo 14. Our displays uh, presently show uh, Apollo 14 at a distance of 155,040 nautical miles away from the Earth and uh, traveling at a velocity of uh, 3,200 at 21.6 uh, feet per second. Uh, presently in uh, mission control, uh, one of our bottom clocks is uh, counting down to the uh, time of the uh, GMT uh, liftoff well, let's uh, get update. The flight engineer to do uh, the descent. clock presently reads uh, six hours, uh, 57 minutes, uh, counting down toward the GET of 54 hours, uh, 30 minutes. One uh, change uh, in the flight plan, uh, and that uh, oh, it really knocked it down a bit there, huh? Uh, in the lunar module, uh, this uh, will be done in the PTC or passive thermal control uh, mode uh, to conserve on RCS uh, and propellants. We were turning for some reason. Uh, this uh, scheduled uh, for 61 hours uh, 45 minutes uh, comes after the clock eight update. Come on, I'll put you However, pretty the, well. Uh, ground elapsed time will remain exactly as that shown in the flight time and uh, the uh, central standard time uh, will remain essentially unchanged. It's been a very quiet day over the flight director's loop. Uh, the uh, individual flight controllers uh, monitoring uh, their systems, uh, talking to their back rooms, uh, really having very little to say uh, of uh, of widespread uh, interest. <laughs> okay, uh, you mean they're talking like casual We're stuff? We're at uh, forty-seven hours, Personal thirty-four stuff. minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 48 hours, uh, 22 minutes, uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. We presently show Apollo 14 at a distance of 156,579 nautical miles away from Earth, traveling at a uh, speed of uh, 30, uh, 178 uh, feet per second. Meanwhile, in uh, mission control over the uh, past 20 to 30 minutes, uh, flight director Pete Frank has been discussing uh, with his flight control team uh, procedures uh, for Al Shepard and Ed Mitchell's uh, lunar module housekeeping chore uh, oh, schedules for early tomorrow morning and uh, flight plan changes are emerging. Since uh, there will be no mid-course uh, correction three scheduled, uh, the current outlook is to move the uh, limb housekeeping forward uh, by one hour, uh, moving forward to uh, 61 hours, uh, 20 minutes uh, ground elapsed time uh, from the uh, previously scheduled uh, 62 hours, 20 minutes. This would also move the uh, television uh, time forward by one hour, moving to uh, 60 hours, 40 minutes ground elapsed time from uh, the previously scheduled 61 hours, 45 minutes ground elapsed time. Honeysuckle uh, will be the uh, station uh, for this transmission. Considered into the change, uh, uh, into the changes is a, a revision back to the original flight plan whereby we would not continue with uh, PTC or the passive thermal control uh, mode. The uh, consideration given here was that uh, a uh, 
waste water dump will have to be scheduled in any case and uh, the uh, procedure to be followed would be to schedule uh, this dump as close as possible to the uh, television and the uh, housekeeping. The advantage to moving forward uh, uh, by one hour is to put the uh, limb housekeeping activities all on one shift. The uh, previous uh, planning or scheduling would uh, have a, a shift change uh, with about one hour remaining uh, uh, into the activity. Now about 250 nautical miles away. Also moments ago, the uh, flight dynamics officer has uh, passed along a, a new set of That's updates a uh, place, uh, for S4B the impact. The coordinates uh, now read uh, eight, 8 degrees uh, 40 minutes south, 26 degrees uh, 19 minutes west, at a ground elapsed time of uh, 82 hours, uh, 38 minutes, uh, 3 seconds. Uniquely, the uh, spacecraft, Apollo 14, uh, will be passing uh, over the front side of the moon at the uh, time of impact. Uh, this was not the case uh, in Apollo 12. It uh, should be passing uh, over the longitude of uh, 61 degrees east at time of impact uh, along its uh, flight path. Uh, this would place it about uh, 30 minutes away uh, uh, from passing over the, uh, the longitude of impact. We will uh, shortly be changing shifts here in the Mission Control Center with the uh, Maroon team uh, coming in to uh, replace the Orange team of flight controllers. The Orange uh, flight control team uh, took over this morning uh, shortly before the uh, crew uh, entered its rest period and uh, we have not heard from them uh, aside from the first 15 or 20 minutes of our shift. We're at 48 hours, 26 minutes uh, into the flight and this is Apollo Control Houston. Yep, something just changed. I think it was just clicking this to is Apollo Control get Houston to at uh, 48 hours, uh, 39 minutes uh, into the flight. We now show Apollo 14 uh, at an altitude of 157,109 nautical miles, a velocity I think of we can proceed down, 3,163 actually. feet per second. We will repeat uh, an earlier announcement, uh, that being that uh, we do have a uh, flight plan uh, change emerging. Uh, since uh, there will be no uh, mid-course correction three, uh, the current plan in mission control is to uh, move the uh, lunar module uh, housekeeping uh, forward one hour. Uh, this would uh, move that time forward to uh, 61 hours, uh, 20 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, by the same token, uh, this would also move the uh, television transmission time uh, forward uh, one hour, moving to uh, 60 hours, uh, 45 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, the uh, Honeysuckle Station uh, would be the station uh, having acquisition. Uh, further, the uh, uh, decision has been m made not to continue in the passive uh, thermal control, control mode uh, during the uh, lunar module housekeeping uh, period. Uh, this uh, decision being made, uh, since uh, there is a requirement uh, to, uh, to have a wastewater dump, and the present plan or outlook is to uh, move the uh, wastewater dump uh, uh, to a time close to the uh, lunar module housekeeping. Uh, there's an advantage to moving uh, forward uh, the housekeeping one hour, this advantage being that uh, all of the activity will take place uh, with uh, one shift of uh, flight controllers. We're in at uh, 48 hours, uh, 41 minutes into the flight, and in uh, mission control, we're in the process so of just by uh, heading into day three handover here. from the uh, orange uh, to the maroon team of flight controllers. Since Depending on how you count the days. 
the Apollo 14 crew, uh, Al Shepard, uh, Stu Rusa, and Ed Mitchell uh, were asleep for the uh, entire shift. There will be no uh, change of shift briefing scheduled. This is Apollo Control, Houston. In other words, there was nothing to say. <laughs> This is Apollo Control at 49 hours, 32 minutes. At this time in Mission Control, the uh, okay. Maroon team headed by I Flight don't know Director why Milton Wendler has completed up. its uh, briefing. Uh, each of the flight controllers We're not transonic the yet. and the spacecraft uh, with the Flight Director. We didn't click anything and that would make it go up. And we find everything progressing smoothly at this time. Uh, no Curious. problems with the spacecraft. Uh, the surgeon reports that all the crewmen are healthy. And um, at this time in the sleep period, they have all. I'm not expecting it to go uh, down to that speed just yet. I'm preparing it because we're getting sleep. close to the red line. Sleep period is scheduled to last for another hour and 27 minutes. Uh, some of the uh, telemetry data would indicate that uh, uh, there has been some stirring around in the spacecraft, but uh, at the present time, all three crewmen uh, would appear to be sleeping or at least resting. Uh, coming up on this shift, uh, among the activities, uh, is the clock update. Uh, this is scheduled to occur in the flight plan at about 54 hours, 45 minutes, uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, flight Director Milt Wendler advises us that that uh, won't be a, uh, an event that will occur at any precise instant, but uh, will probably require a total of about 10 minutes uh, to sync all of the clocks together at uh, the updated time, but at about 54 hours, 45 minutes, uh, we would plan to jump ahead in ground elapsed time to about okay. 55 hours, 25 minutes. And just slow uh, down. The exact uh, amount of time to be changed uh, will depend so I'm not seeing on, this on uh, assessments as to the need for mid-course correction for uh, but the, the variation would be very slight, a uh, matter of seconds. At the present time, the flight dynamics officer reports that uh, mid-course correction four, if it is needed at all, would appear to be around two feet per second. Uh, the uh, additional feet tracking per second. data uh, shows the parasitic... That's a very small correction, it's like 0.6 meters per second. 60 nautical miles were presently showing it at 65 uh, when the initial tracking came in yesterday following the mid-course correction maneuver, uh, the data showed that the Parasynthian was about 67 nautical miles. And as expected, and as we've seen on previous uh, missions, uh, additional tracking tends to confirm that the Parasynthian is in fact lower than the initial tracking shows. At the present time, we show Apollo 14 uh, traveling at uh, a velocity of 3,117 feet per second, and the spacecraft altitude right now is 158,778 nautical miles. Uh, we'll continue to uh, stand by and come up uh, as soon as we hear any conversation from the crew. Uh, as I said, the uh, sleep period is scheduled to end uh, in about one hour. Uh, 25 minutes from now. At 49 hours, 35 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 50 hours, 32 minutes. And at the present time, we're uh, awaiting the uh, crew's awakening. Uh, crew is scheduled to awake uh, from this sleep period at 27 hours, or rather 27 minutes, uh, 45 seconds. And uh, the last check with the uh, surgeon, we hadn't uh, seen any uh, indication okay. that the crew was time two hours. at this time. Uh, during part of the... Uh, We're back uh, into the transonic region. We've been on a low bit rate, and uh, data. And I'm sort of debating when uh, to break out of uh, heart rate supersonic from speeds. The crew, which of course is the primary indication Oops. as to uh, whether or not they're sleeping or uh, beginning to stir. At this time, Apollo 14 is 160,493 nautical miles from Earth, and the spacecraft velocity 
69 feet per second. Now this will be a relatively quiet shift uh, as planned in the flight plan. Uh, coming up we have the uh, clock update uh, which will occur at about 54 hours 45 minutes. Uh, they'll be running some checks on the uh, S-band communications equipment and the VHF uh, system in preparation for the bi-static radar test to be performed later in the mission. Oh. And uh, they'll be changing lithium hydroxide. Oh, well, we'll throw it back. It doesn't seem like... Oh, I guess we're, we are hitting the red line there a bit. Okay, time yeah, to go also, below Mach 1. Uh, a crew exercise period scheduled at about uh, 57 hours. Uh, that would be using the in-flight... A little uh, bit hard on the mock gauge to see when it's actually uh, crossing that line. Type uh, but I guess that's why we have the verbal warning. Uh, we'll be standing by for the... Uh, and we'll get uh, a huge amount of lift when it gets... As soon as we get any conversation with the spacecraft, uh, we'll come up again and begin uh, covering the uh, air-to-ground live at that time. Oh, I guess I'm right on the line minutes. there. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, no, let's just get down underneath it. Back to normal airliner mode. Yep, there is the lift. Uh, this is Apollo Control at uh, not being 50 subjected hours, to all that drag anymore. Uh, we just received a call uh, from Al Shepard, uh, so we'll we'll pick up and uh, follow any conversation we'll live at like this that. point on. Okay, yeah. We're pretty close. We're close enough that this would be normal airliner descent situation, I believe. Houston, Apollo 14. Apollo 14, this is Houston. Go ahead. Good morning, Bruce. Reading you loud and clear. We have completed our post-sleep checklist. We have the radios for you when you're ready to copy. Mm, Roger, yeah, go ahead with the post-sleep checklist. The runways, uh... 30, so, I mean, not 30, 3, and so 30 degrees, it's a 9,841 foot runway, and it's basically sea level. Okay, 14, there it is. Uh, understand Al, 16041 and 5 hours. No, 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 no. Stu, 01038, 7 hours. I haven't played this game and in ages. 05038, 6 and 1 half hours, over. That's correct. Apollo 14 is... I don't want to move. One of the... That. Okay, we've tuned nav one. Good morning, Bruce. Go ahead. Under 100 nautical All miles. Right, Roger. I don't want to interrupt your eat period, but when you have a convenient time, I have a plan update for you. It's right. uh, fairly the lengthy. time. One. Nothing in the immediate future, though. Okay, stand by. Roger, stand by for about five minutes or so, and be advised we completed the lyo canister change at 51. Hours and the lift command module Delta P at uh, 5059 was 0 0.95. Understand 0 0.9 or 5 for the Delta P at uh, 5059. Hey Bruce, uh, I'll take that flight plan update. Uh, press in. Okay, Stu, here we go. Uh, you may want to just get out the flight plan and uh, mark out the items uh, as we go along, uh, or you can copy it down either way. No, I'd rather work on the flight plan. Uh, you give me uh, the right places to go. Okay, up through 5920, that's 590 or plus 20. Everything is nominal. And uh, from there on, you take the uh, LEM CM Delta P vent uh, at 59 hours and 25 minutes, and move that up to 59 hours even.
And we should definitely be underneath okay, we'll the, the well, 2.7 tons. We'll burn it by the time we get there. Roger. Take the P-52 that occurs at 59.45 and move it up 10 minutes to uh, commence at 59.35. Over. Not that we're burning fuel very quickly right now. Okay, we'll shoot a P-52 at 59.35. Roger. At uh, six zero hours and 20 minutes, you have an O2 fuel cell purge and a waste water dump listed. We want to move those up to 59 hours and uh, 50 minutes. That's five niner plus five zero. Still with me, okay, uh, Bruce, I moved the fuel cell purge. Yeah, I'm just uh, making, getting it all in here, Bruce. Uh, move the fuel cell purge and the wastewater dump to 59.50. Roger, delete mid-course correction number three, over. Uh, jolly good, we'll strike out mid-course three. Okay, now everything scheduled between the times of six zero plus five five and six four plus one zero should be scheduled one hour earlier. And if you look at uh, sixty four plus ten, the break point there uh, comes after the uh, verb forty eight, and we're going to have a write in that says establish PTC there at sixty three ten and the LIOH canister change. Uh, comes at the, the nominal 6412, over. Okay, let me uh, run over this one again then. Everything from, uh, everything from 61 hours to 6410 is moved up an hour. Is that affirmative? Roger, starting with the prepared transfer items, Pearl M activation checklist and all that stuff. Okay, we'll move that up uh, one hour. Okay, I've got that. Everything from 61 to 6410. Move up an hour. Roger, stand by a second. All right, Stu. At uh, the time of 6310. Following the LEM housekeeping activities, re-establish PTC. Over. Okay, we're going to PTC at 6310 and perform the lithium hydroxide canister change at the nominal currently scheduled time of 6412 and pick up the normal flight plan timing and sequence afterwards, over. consumables update for you if you're ready to copy back at 51 hours. Stand by one. Okay, uh, let her rip, Bruce. Well, don't let it rip like that. 
Well, do you read me, Stu? I think we're in the process of changing antennas. I read the five square. Uh, I'm ready to copy. Okay, GET of 51 hours even. RCS total, 84%. Alpha, 8-4. Bravo, 8-3. Charlie, 8-4. Delta, 8-4. H2 tank 1, 7 niner decimal 3. 7 niner decimal 7. O2 tanks, 9 or 2. 9 or 1. Four, five, over. Wow, we've got a serious pitch up. Maybe I should speed up a little bit, actually. Yeah, if I'm done the throttle somewhat. Okay, uh, got you at, uh, 51 hours, I mean, uh, we're going uh, down and we have a pitch up. <laughs> That's rough. That's rough stuff. Wow, I don't want the afterburner, actually. Roger, and uh, you may be interested in knowing that at the present yeah, doesn't time, give me great there are only two zero pounds of RCS hope for landing. The nominal that is a serious angle up to there. be going down at 2,000 feet per minute. I'm sorry, Bruce, uh, you, you busted up. Uh, would you start over again, please? Well, anyway. Roger, with respect to total RCS fuel, you are only two zero pounds below the planned RCS budget at the present time, and you are two... Okay, that's uh, broken up pretty badly. Uh, I did read we're uh, two zero pounds uh, below nominal. And they would be below nominal on the RCS propellant because they had to do multiple docking attempts when they were trying to dock to the lunar module. Okay, Stu, how do you read now? During the transmission and docking okay, maneuver. Okay, I'm back with you and uh, copy the 20 pounds. So since they couldn't dock immediately, uh, Roger, it took and, a while. Uh, 20 pounds really is not too bad. A couple of other items that came up uh, while you were asleep is that uh, we're going to go ahead and exit PTC for the, uh, the LEM housekeeping uh, since we want to have the TV up for it. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and dump the wastewater uh, anyway. Or run, run that by again. We need to dump the well, wastewater. I guess we're going to have this up angle. Which will ruin what. PTC. Consequently, we're going to come out of PTC for the LEM housekeeping and have a good TV attitude to boot. Uh, one item is that uh, I believe you went to sleep with uh, 1620 showing on the disky, uh, which was continuously updating during your sleep period. And uh, unless you have uh, strong feelings otherwise, uh, we would rather have a uh, blank display up on the disk to keep from cycling the little reed switches all the time. And another flight plan this item. To computer. At, uh, 55 hours, even or thereabouts, uh, we intend to request another set of photographs of the S-4B from you uh, using the data acquisition camera and the sextant. We'll have an updated now 88 for you later on. Over. Okay, and say that time again, Bruce. Roger, 5-5 five, five well, plus 0-0. Over. My engineer, trim for landing. Okay, and uh, we'll blank the disky. And okay, no need to blank it now. Well, from 1.3 tons. Roger. No, I'm, I understand. For sleep, for sleep we'll, uh, we'll put it to uh, red. Roger, roger. Roger, roger. And when you all get your breakfast well prepared and are feeling in a jovial mood up there, why we'll I've never the landed at this airport before, so uh, we might as well kill some okay, uh, hang on till, uh, fuel we'll, uh, get and in, sort of uh, fly over and then come around. No, it'll be a couple of minutes yet. Uh, we just got the, got the paper here and we're editing it right now. Okay. For me, uh, Bruce, I was thinking about uh, that, what you, I could see through the section, you know, I had two, uh, looked like two dim stars in the, uh, in the section at that uh, pointing attitude, and uh, I, I didn't see any, any tumbling motion at all on, on either one of them, and they were separated probably by, uh, roughly, half to three-quarters 
of a degree. I'd say 0.5 to 0.6 of a degree uh, separation between the two. But uh, I really uh, okay. couldn't see anything that would determine whether I was looking at, at the S-4B or a, or a star, a faint star. Roger, we copy, Stu. I uh, really expected this. I guess I really expected uh, the S-4B to be a little brighter than uh, either one of the two objects that I looked at. Okay, stand by a second, please. Oops. Well, let's see what we're looking at here. That might be too much. It's not exactly 30. Go ahead. Yeah, we've just uh, received the intelligence down here that uh, your family is having lasagna for your breakfast, over. Lasagna? For breakfast? Oh, man, for for his breakfast. Uh, of course, the well, astronaut's breakfast would be a different time. It's probably nighttime back at home. I think he's telling me for ascent. <laughs> Very good. Instead of for descent right there. This is this is how we maintain altitude at 245 knots. So we're a little bit off there. No, that's all right. We're gonna come around. Go ahead, fourteen. Roger, Bruce. I have a few observations about the light flash experiment that I'd like to pass on, and perhaps you can generate some information from it that might be useful to us. Uh, would you stand by a minute, please, Ed? 10,000 feet. Okay, okay I'm going to go, go lower, lower so that he doesn't keep saying that. Stop, stop saying that, stop saying that. cosmic ray light flashes, and we'll digest what you've got, give you our views back probably in a couple hours, over. Okay, Bruce, first of all, let me say we all decided to try to dark adapt to the experiment, at least part of it last night. I think our experience was that we probably saw one flash after dark adapting and promptly fell asleep before we saw any more. Uh, at least that's true in my case. I think I'll still stay awake a bit longer. However, I think we have seen only three types of flashes so far. Uh, what we would probably call a star, a supernova, and a flash, or rather a streak. And I think that I have seen some, uh, I forget, don't recall what name we tagged to them, but uh, reminiscent of the lightning flashing in, in there behind the clouds. Uh, those are the only ones that we have really identified, and it takes a while to uh, realize what you are seeing because it happens so quickly that it takes a little bit of practice before uh, you can really recognize these things. I think perhaps after watching them for uh, another period or so, we will be a little more experienced at it and be able to do a more creditable job of dark adapting and getting the sort of data that uh, would be liked. Uh, my experience is that even the so-called star, the supernova, are not as clean uh, a phenomenon or clear a picture as I had in my mind that they would appear. There still, still seem to be at least uh, two flashes, uh, maybe a, a, bright, a bright flash uh, followed a, an instant later by... Uh, They're just calling them supernovas. Flash. I don't think or they really mean that they are supernovas. It doesn't seem to be, there does not seem to be a set pattern in each case. Not Sometimes sure. It's, uh, Uh, I guess it's about all I have to say at the moment. Uh, Roger, Ed, I think we've copied all I'd that. I'd like to add a few things. 
I'd like to add a few comments on that too, Bruce. Go ahead. Hey, Bruce, do you read? Roger, 14, uh, go. Okay, Bruce, uh, I'd like to make, uh, you know, you, you asked just about whether we saw them before we were dark adapted, so uh, last night I took my flashlight and shined it in both my eyes, and of course, you know, that should run your, any dark adaption you would have, and in fact, you know, you got the, the residual glow in your eye for a minute, and then uh, closed them, and uh, in one case, uh, less Experiment. than a minute, uh, I had to start seeing the flashes, and on the second time around, I'd say it's probably around two minutes uh, before I start picking them up. Okay, Stu, and were you seeing, uh, when you started seeing him, did you see a number of flashes? Uh, Ed, before, I think he saw just about one before he fell asleep. Well, uh, what we did was we set the timer uh, on 20 minutes, and uh, I heard the timer go off, and by that time I had only seen uh, four or five flashes that I could recall. However, uh, some other periods during the night, uh, that is when I did the flashlight routine, uh, that was later on, uh, more toward this morning, when I started playing with the flashlight. And uh, I, in one case, uh, I saw one and then followed not too long after that by four or five. And then I uh, haven't really picked up any uh, pattern on that. You may see one and then three or four, you may see one wait a while. Uh, can't really, uh, it's a little difficult to time in the dark, you know, and get a feel. And as far as the types of... Okay, we're switching antennas, Stu. Three types. Uh, however, my super, supernova, the explosion is just in one. It's very rare I'll see a... Uh, a... Uh, a three pinpoint exactly of light for a minute. exactly what approach I should be doing here. And then uh, the With streets I've noticed are all uh, what I would consider over at the periphery of my uh, of my vision. It, it appears that almost all the streaks are, are right along the, the edge of my eye and I get the, get the impression that the majority of these I, are running, say, uh, longitudinal with, uh, with the axis of my body. And uh, it, it seems uh, rare that I see a streak that's right, right in the center of my vision. Okay, well, I'm going to take it now. Do we have any observations from the commander? He's busy cooking breakfast right now. Al Shepard is cooking breakfast. just went through an antenna switch over. And, uh, oh, I'm a little bit late. We've got some news here if you all are ready. Oh, I get used to the gears drag before, well before landing time. Same with the visor. Okay, well, maybe it should be higher. Wow, okay, we have a lot of drag. Roger, we copy, Al. I'm too low. Okay, wow, that is adjusting very sharply. Uh, okay, well, I see the runway. Yeah, getting readjusted to this is a little bit fun. Okay, 
play. No, we're actually more in line than I thought we would be. Marquette streaking Warriors continue okay. to hold forth as the nation's top-ranked college basketball power on Monday, while unbeaten Southern California okay, displays there. defending champion UCLA in the runner-up spot. Houston, 15-3, to is a newcomer to the top 20. The Cougars, who play Long Island U in Madison Square Garden Thursday night, moved okay, into the I number 18 I'm spot. A little bit more USC settled now. and uh, UCLA will collide Saturday at uh, Southern Cal. It's uh, too bad we don't have a TV uplink for you. That'd be pretty nice. Fourteen, this is Bo Bosco. Oh, How do you oh, read? Oh. Good morning, Bo. Loud clear. How are you? I think uh, they're going to trade Just off on the sir. news. This is Washington Associated Press. The Food and Drug Administration said tests on compressed fish products such as frozen dinners, fish sticks, Not and fish cakes. Lined up, right? So mercury content well below the danger level. The FDA said below Monday the danger level is more good. than 80 samples contained an average mercury level of 0.06 parts per million. Under FDA guidelines, fish with a half part per million is withdrawn from the market. Seems reasonable to me. Yeah. Seems reasonable to me. The chill blast of a February norther blew into Texas Monday, dropping the temperature sharply after the summer-like weather which closed out uh, last week. It feels very last weird. January saw temperatures in the 90s at several points in deep south Texas. And it was one of the driest months ever back here in Houston. Here in Texas, the Dallas weather station, for example, measured 0.16, that's 16 one hundredths of an inch of rain, against the normal 2.32 inches for January. <clears throat> the rarest atom particle reported found. New York, Associated Press, physicists from the University of California reported Monday they have discovered the rarest and most elusive of the nuclear particles within the atom. They found the particles track on a photograph of a nuclear interaction. An inch long footprint it left during its brief on, lifetime of 15 billionths of a second. The particle is called the Anti mega minus baryon part anti particle. Okay, ouch. All right. The mirror image of matter as we know it on Earth. Well, it could be worse. The discover is related to the idea Ow. that somewhere out there. That in seems space, a little bit more dramatic than I needed to be. made but... up of antimatter, just as galaxies or star clusters, such okay. as the one we live in, the Milky Way. Oh God, there's another plane there. Uh, I don't know if there's any taxiways around here hey, or anything. Oh, I think I saw one. Though. Just go by the window. Well, maybe that's not a plane. I don't know what that is over there. I feel like there's some terminals missing and extra tractors around here. Also, no taxiways. It's uh, is that a tractor at the end of the runway too? This is an international airport. of a second. They said we had a standing offer of a case of champagne to whoever found it. There's a turnaround thing. I, I don't know I if there's an airport lab, that just has deliver. turnaround things. It feels like it ought to be a bigger airport. Yep, that is a tractor, in fact. All right, well, get away, bro. Yeah, that's a pretty great piece of news. Okay, on Let's Wall see, Street, can investors I follow that? heavily on Monday, giving the Dow Jones Industrial Average its highest single-day gain of the year. The Dow Jones Average of 30 industrial stocks closed up at 877.81 up 9.31 points whatever one all right we're parking 71. here Shoot. trading was heavy throughout the session with the new york stock exchange all right up yeah a or definitely more not normal during the day but the tape was three minutes late at here the we are so let me pause the audio oop oop it's saying things okay okay don't be mad why is it mad Stop, 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 stop. All right. Yes. Okay. So we have arrived. And next time it'll be in Flight Sim 2020. And I'll have to decide what plane because I've got more planes for Flight Sim 2020 than when I originally created the plan. But I have survived the Concorde flight. <laughs> and, and we'll see how it goes. 
in the next flight in around the world in any planes. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.